Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman and thank you so much for joining me on today's video where I'm going to be showing you our 6x10 cargo trailer converted into a budget camper. Now if you've been on YouTube for a while, you've probably already seen a bunch of these cargo trailer conversions, but ours is going to be a little bit unique in that we're doing it for some very specific reasons. We're trying to keep it budget friendly first and foremost, second of all we're trying to keep it light, we're trying to keep the cargo trailer very versatile to be able to be used for a lot of different things and we're trying to just keep everything very, very simple. I also want to mention that if you're a subscriber to the channel and you're familiar with who I am, I'm a fisherman, I'm a hunter, we go camping, and this really fits that, but that's not why we got it, because this is really not in the budget in that category. We actually got this because of our work, and we travel a lot for a ministry where we help churches and missionaries, and we have a lot of equipment that we bring with us to do that work. And so that's the purpose that we got it. But because we have it, I thought I'd go ahead and share it with you and you might even see it occasionally uh, for some hunting, fishing, or camping adventures as well on the channel in the future. So let's go ahead and jump inside and I'll show you what we've done. All right, so now you're getting the first look inside this trailer. I think I forgot to mention that this is a 6x10 cargo trailer with a Vino, so that does give you a little bit more uh, length over the 10 feet. Again, 6 feet wide, and those are some kind of the exterior dimensions, a little bit less than that on the inside. You're looking in right now from the exterior internal, the actual rear door, which is a ramp door. At first, I wasn't too sure if I was going to like that, but actually, after using it a little bit, I'm a big fan. Easy to haul stuff in and out, and you can just open it up and get a beautiful view or a nice breeze coming in the back. One of the first things you'll notice that we did is we painted it. We did not pull it off and insulate it. Again, we're just keeping it cheap, light, and uh, inexpensive. We didn't want to put that expense into it for right now. We just painted it to make it look a little bit nicer with some paint that we actually I got for free laying around scrap paint from other people and so forth and we painted it. Now again, in an effort to keep it light, versatile and budget friendly, instead of building beds into this, we're using these two cots. Most of the time we're hauling equipment around, these cots stay folded up and we just fill the, the trailer with a lot of equipment. But if we do need to use this trailer to sleep in, uh, then we can unfold the cots and my wife and I both have a place to sleep and usually our daughter sleeps somewhere here uh, just on the floor in a sleeping bag. But it works really well, it's very versatile. If we needed to pull something uh, larger into this, if we ever wanted to use it for a four-wheeler or there's other, any kind of other use like that, we could just fold these up and the trailer remains very versatile. And again, very inexpensive because these cots were something that we already owned. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move one of these cots out of the way so you can get a little bit better view and we'll move up the trailer and look at some of the other features of our very simple camper conversion. All right, so the next thing we have in here to look at is our bathroom system. This is old. I don't know how old it is, but it's from Sears, and it's called a pack potty 2000. I got this actually for free from my brother-in-law. He was working for a lady who was getting rid of it, and he picked it up, and I thought of me and picked it up. It's actually a very, basically a miniature RV toilet system. There's a water reservoir, and when you open it up, you can actually uh, pump some water here into your toilet, and then you can pull this out in the front to flush it. And it goes down into basically a sealed container at the bottom where you can take the top portion of the potty off. You have a sealed container at the bottom that you can then carry out and dump at an RV dump site or even carry inside and dump it down the toilet. Uh, we don't necessarily use this all the time on the road, uh, but this is something that we would use if we are staying in the camper in the middle of the night so we don't have to get up and go maybe to a bathhouse at a state park or something like that. Really convenient to have this in our conversion. Now, Let's take a look at the kitchen, which is really the biggest bulk of the work we've done in here and what I'm most excited about. All right, we're up into the kitchen now, which we built into the V-nose of the trailer. We used the V-nose plus about another seven or eight inches out here to the edge of the door. And that gives us about a 28 inch total depth of our countertop. This countertop was actually something we picked up on Facebook Marketplace from an old office cubicle that they were tearing out. And the guy had all kinds of these. We just found one that was about the uh, dimensions that we needed. And the big advantage was it was actually deeper than your typical kitchen countertop, which gave us the depth we need to get all the way back into the tip of the V-nose. Now, over here on the left side, we have a sink. This is a 15 by 15 inch sink, often called a bar sink. Uh, when I cut out the space on the countertop uh, to put the sink in, I actually had a leftover piece that I cut to put on top of the sink and give us a little bit of extra countertop space there. And then we can just move that out of the way and put it somewhere as necessary. Now, again, keeping in mind that we're going for very cheap and very simple, we don't have any electric in here. So we don't have an electric pump. What we have down here is a foot pump. And as you pump, you get a little bit of water out. And also we have over here a soap dispenser that's built right into the second hole of this sink so that we don't have to have any kind of soap bottle up here that's flopping around. This works out really well for us. I'll show you the actual water system down below in a minute. 
And then over here, what we have is we have a two burner propane burner that we got off of Amazon. I think it was somewhere around $65. This is working really well. Again, in an effort to be cheap and light, we didn't put a 20 pound propane tank on the front of this trailer. Right now, at least, we're only using the one pound propane bottles and it's been working out just fine for us so far. We haven't really got a good feel of how long it's going to last on a bottle, but so far we've gotten several good cooks, uh, cooked several good meals on just one bottle of propane and it keeps it very light in the trailer and very small space saving. So that's our cook on top. And then we have these sliding doors. If I was going to make one change to this, I made a mistake here in using quarter inch plywood for these sliding doors and oftentimes they seem to be very susceptible to the hum changes in humidity. And so you might be able to see as I pull that out right now, the door actually bowed and it becomes very hard to put back in the slot at the end. There are days, depending on the humidity, that it's straight. But if I was doing this again, I would not use quarter inch plywood. On this side, when we slide it back, you can see instead of building in heavy wooden shelves, we just went to Walmart and for $10 picked up one of these uh, three drawer um, storage units here. And we've got some extra propane down here right now, which eventually is probably going to get moved to a different place. We've got some different pots and silverware down here. And then we've got some food storage as well. Again, we're still trying to kind of figure out all of our system here. Got some utensils and uh, washcloths and hot pads and that kind of thing. And then we have uh, several of these, which I think I got 10 of these little storage bins for about a, uh, $10 or a dollar each. And we've got different things in there like spices and uh, sometimes we have one for potatoes. I think we have a couple actually inside that aren't out here right now, but we can stack several up here and they actually ride really well. I've been really pleasantly surprised that they're not sliding all over the place. And so that's kind of our storage, at least for right now, on this side. Then let's go take a look at the other side. And on this side is where we have our water storage. So we have a trash container and then we have two of these six gallon containers that we picked up from Walmart. I think they were maybe about $13 a piece. I'm not sure, something like that. So the back one here is six gallons of fresh water and that just comes down the line into our foot pump and feeds our faucet. And then the other one, as you can see, just has a drain right out of the bottom of our sink and into our other six gallon container. When that's full, we can just pull up this accordion drain, pull out our uh, gray water tank here, go out and dump it out. Or if we need to fill up this, we can fill it up at any hose or even take it into a grocery store and fill it up uh, at a water uh, supply there in a grocery store, something like that. Again, so far working really well. The foot pump is really easy to control. It conserves a lot of water. It's not the most convenient for washing dishes because again, you have no hot water and you don't have a good spray. You just have a kind of a, a nice little stream coming out. So uh, it definitely conserves water, but probably not the most convenient thing to use to wash dishes. All right, so a couple things I forgot to mention up here on the wall. We do have a paper towel holder, and then this is something my wife picked up from Hobby Lobby. And we keep our plates in here, and we got a couple of these uh, collapsible cups that we put in there, as well as some of our utensils, our silverware, and so forth. And this is really handy, really nice place to keep that. In the future, we may consider getting more of these or something similar to them, maybe to put on this side for spices or oils or something like that, just to keep our stuff organized and give us some, a little bit more food storage in some of those uh, storage containers down below. Now, I also wanted to mention, I think I already mentioned with the water, we don't have any battery or solar system. I considered it, but it just got too expensive for what we were trying to do and the amount that we were gonna use this and everything. And so, again, we just were going super simple, super cheap and super light, and batteries are not light. So for lighting the trailer at night, we just have some different uh, lighting here that are just battery operated. I picked this up at Walmart for maybe $10, $11, I think. It runs off of a couple of AA batteries. Um, you can't tell now because we're in bright daylight, but it's pretty bright and it's got magnets on it. So I can just place it wherever I want to uh, along these different uh, roof beams here and I can just move it wherever we need the most light. Uh, we have another one here. This one needs new batteries, but these you can get at Harbor Freight and all kinds of places. They got the little light switch on them. Again, they've got magnets on them or uh, different ways that you can mount that as well. So we can move these around. Eventually, we probably are going to get a few more of them. And then one last thing up here, we have a smoke and carbon monoxide detector that also has a thermometer on the face of it, which is really nice uh, if you're staying out overnight and you want to know maybe how cold you survived or how hot it is in the trailer. Really nice. It's 80 degrees in here right now. Now, you might be wondering with our kitchen in here and no electricity, how do we keep any food cold? Well, we have this Lifetime 55 quart cooler. I did a review on this not too long ago. I'll leave a link for it if you want to see the review. Um, but again, in an effort to keep it cheap 
and light and not having solar and not having batteries and all of that kind of thing, we opted just to go with a cooler, fill it with some ice blocks, and it's worked out really well. Most of the time it sits here right by the door, right across from the kitchen. When we're traveling, we're on the road, uh, we can just stop, pull over, and even make a nice meal in the trailer. Even if we're not camping, we can just stop and use the kitchen portion of it. And then we've got all of our other gear right here. If we do need to sleep in it, this is in the way for those cots. So we usually end up just sitting this outside somewhere in the shade and giving us room to put our cots in the trailer. Well, y'all, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you enjoyed our version of a cargo trailer conversion. And maybe it gave you some ideas if you're trying to do something like this on a budget. Again, I recognize this isn't the most luxurious version of a cargo trailer, but really we don't have a whole lot of money into it. If you're gonna do this, obviously you have the expense of the trailer, but we really didn't spend a whole lot outfitting the trailer for what we needed to do. Again, it meets our needs very well to be simple, uh, to be lightweight, and of most of all, to be very budget friendly. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. And until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.